All right. Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Inside the Barrel. Uh, this one's a pint, nice and short and sweet. <laughs> um, today, the what we're going to talk about today is uh, an issue I ran into the other day on a client project where um, they wanted to allow uh, the end user to upload uh, or import record data into a, a table, right? So the example that I'm going to use is time card data. So you have people that have time card spreadsheets and they want to upload it to the time card table. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I uh, someone at CASC had some, some answers for this, but what I had found ultimately was it was based on some community posts that I'd seen. So the code is out there. I've just gathered it. <laughs> into nice. a working demo for people yeah so um yeah without further ado we can move over to the the share yeah and um, i can i just want to like talk a little bit more like i think this is a, a common like customer issue where like somebody is used to using excel for so long and they have like lots of data and yeah yeah where, where i've seen is consultants will recommend, well, like, let's move it to a multivariable row set, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, just press the new button, fill out this row of data, press the new, fill out this row of data. And I find there's like a limit to even using that, right? Like just at, at some point after like five or 10, or depending how many rows you have, it's just way faster to do it in Excel. And yeah. uh, like, I think this is a really good one for people to, to kind of keep as a nugget because it could help uh, bridge that gap of a process when the process is completely out of service now to import that data into service now so it can be utilized such as time card data yeah and you know another another thing that i see this being beneficial for is as as an admin i mean how many requests do you get to to import data mm -hmm. not to mention your day-to-day -day plus your backlog of all the stuff you have to do so things can start getting behind right so you have your end users trying to say hey i need stuff uploaded and now you can empower your uh users to get their data in without uh having to wait in, in a queue or or put a request in you know they are now empowered to uh to get that into the system <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm with you yeah, I think anytime you empower users, right? Like it's a uh, yeah, it, it really makes admins' lives easier. So yes, yeah, for sure. So we I all know will... how busy we are. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll share your screen and let's uh, let's jump right into it. All right, perfect. So again, this was just a real basic throw together um, example of what we're doing, but it's it's a time card record producer. Uh, the, one of the keys here is that we, we point it towards the data source table, not the actual time card table, because we'll, we'll handle that separately. Um, and really most of this is handled right here in this script field on the <coughs> record producer. Um, and we can walk through this real quick. Uh, so what we're going to there is I, I realized after i wrote this stuff because i did a lot of copy and pasting <laughs> that um some of this isn't needed anymore some of this checking just because mm -hmm. you can use the uh the attachment question or uh, field type mm -hmm. and so you can't you can't add more than one record so there's a check in here to see if there's more than one attachment mm -hmm. out there this this section here obviously you wouldn't need that anymore because you're only it only allows one anyways yeah. um but uh basically the concept here is you add the you know on the uh the record producer itself you click to add the the, the excel file and uh what you're doing is you're ch you're looking at the the attachment table for that record um and hmm. then uh as you grab that uh, glide record object you can check to see if there's a file and obviously this one probably isn't needed anymore either because you can make the attachment field mandatory <laughs> <So> <laughs> you don't really need that one anymore either 
Because yeah. I think this was originally based on people just attaching records to the the record producer itself, mm-hmm. you know, the drag and drop method. And there you can add a number of records. Um, and so that was where the, some of these checks came from was because of that. Makes sense. And so then, so then you'd probably want to disable like or hide attachments, right? I know that's an option on the yeah, catalog. Yeah. Yeah, you'd want to do that just because you don't want to have mul- multiple entry points for the files. You want to really lock it down to the single um, click to add file. Um, and then, uh, so another nice thing though you can do is uh, you can check the file itself to see if it's mm-hmm. got an extension of XLS or XLSX to make sure cool. that they have uploaded at least the correct file um and then i have heard that service now has a method of or that they they have an example and in, in one thing that they do where they check the columns to make sure you've got the correct columns but it's on, a, on it's on an on submit though because they there's some some reason there that they do it through the on submit versus anywhere else and i wasn't sure if if I was going to ask you about this, but I totally spaced it. Uh, if <laughs> JavaScript is able to dig into it from the client side. I don't like. It's been a long time since I've had to deal with files. In, yeah. In, in JavaScript, and so I don't remember if if we can dig into the file itself before it's submitted. And I would assume this is why ServiceNow does it on submit once mm-hmm. it's already in there that they can look at it. I would. I would think. Either way, like, I mean, like, yes, as, as much as you can put on the client for instant feedback would be great. Um, I think that, like, if this is, like, being submitted as a record, um, I think you just want some validation on, like, the transform side to make sure that it has the column so it just doesn't input bogus data. And so yeah. I think that's probably an acceptable place. Like, what I imagine you would do is also have, like, a flow attached to this that sends somebody an email when like the transform is done and if any rows were skipped like let them know so like they can kind of um see see if like some of the data didn't get in so they're not confused when they go to the system they're like where's like half the data right 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 yeah obviously you can make this pretty robust um Mm -hmm. this was a quick uh throw together here but yeah and and now that i remember it's the reason i do it on the submit is because once it's into the import table you can just check the columns there and mm-hmm, see that mm-hmm. they exist. Um, but I was, uh, you know, same thing. If we can get it on the client, it makes the the you you know uh, usability UX that much better. better. Yeah. But uh, so and, and then here's another little thing that I came across too. So in native, you know, obviously if, if you fail some check, it's not the right file type or whatever. You want to bring them back to that record producer, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what do you do from the portal side, you know? And mm-hmm. so you can do a, a producer dot redirect, which is native. So you'd send them back to the native um, catalog item link. But if mm-hmm. it's if you're in the portal, you can do the portal redirect. I didn't know that existed. This is new to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you send them to a, the the catalog item there in the in the portal. But what's neat is you can have them both listed here. Mm-hmm. And only one will work depending on where you are. So you don't have to do any checks to say, oh, am I in native or am I in portal? You just run yeah. both of them and it'll handle it on its on its own. Cool. So that was kind of neat. Yeah, I was pretty excited about that one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's been around for like years, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> all right. So um, we, we get through all the checking. That's, that's happened. Everything's good. Um, what we're going to do is set a couple of uh, constant values here. One is the table that you're ultimately going to go, or the import table that you're going to use, mm-hmm. and then the actual transform map sysid. Now, another thing that came up after I built this for the client was they wanted to do a couple of transforms mm-hmm. as this goes through, and the, this um, you can pass it. Uh, a, a, a string, a comma delimited string. So you could have multiple transform maps here um, mm. and use that to process in that order. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and set up the um, 
the table, the uh, the data source record here, uh, mm -hmm. and set that up. Tell it's a, an Excel. Um, you can specify the header row and the sheet number, and then insert that into the source table. Um, and and you have to get that sys ID because you're going to need it. And um, and then one other little piece that uh, came up was on that original sys attachment call you have to move that attachment to this record hmm. so a very simple way instead of doing like the copy attachment and all that stuff mm -hmm. all you do is use reset the table name <laughs> and it will mm -hmm. update that record to now make the attachment show up on the the data source record because that's where you're going to grab it from as an attachment interesting uh, yeah that's a yeah. nice little little trick yeah so, yeah so repeat that one more time because that sounds a little okay little... so currently you have a sys attachment record right when you mm -hmm. run this this record producer it creates a record in the sys attachment table mm -hmm. um you want to make sure that that attachment is attached to the data source record. correct so that the transform runs on it yep right so all you're doing is you're saying okay this original um because that sys attachment gr was what we did up uh, here okay i got it i got it because because the the table name is going to be this thing yeah yeah and so all you do is ah, you, cool yeah you just yep. update that table name to this this the nice data source Smart. record uh yeah, super cool yeah. yeah 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 very simple very easy mm -hmm. um and then once that's done Cause yeah, I, I was, as I was copy and pasting and I couldn't remember why this was there. And so I hadn't, I, I moved it out <laughs> and I'm like, this isn't working. <laughs> and then it occurred to me, I'm like, oh yeah, you gotta move the attachment over. All right. Yeah. So then we have this glide import set loader, um, which uh, is going to take the current data source record as um, part of the, uh, method there the, the properties in there mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to uh, start that process um, gotcha yeah it looks like it looks like you're like getting it the import set online like 66 and then you're loading it right on mm -hmm. 67 and yep. i wonder here is like where you can do some checks, right? Like at some point, like maybe before line 70, you could do I, a check. I believe, yeah, I think you could because you could go back and check that import set table and mm -hmm. look for columns and stuff like that. So you still, it's not necessarily that it's you're all the way down the process. You still can stop it here if, if mm -hmm. a check fails, mm -hmm. but um, it's not it's not instantaneous, right? It's not that client totally. side happens right there, but you still can do it here. And I, I would agree. I think, you know, if you if you put something into um, this this line, well, my keyboard doesn't want to work. Interesting. <laughs> um, that's weird. It's okay. uh, <laughs> then uh then i think you could do that you can do some checks and and, and look for certain things cool. um, and then anyway so then you do this uh import set transformer worker which is going to run um that uh transform map got it and it'll it'll put it in the background and then it'll start uh and then since we don't actually want i think if i remember correctly we don't necessarily need a, a well, it does create the record, um, but again, you could you could have two of the direct the redirects here. Mm -hmm. So after it's done, you can send them back to the catalog or the home page on the service portal um, or somewhere within native. And what you should get is um, so we, we can run through it real quick. I have a a single line. Um, oh, is nothing gonna? Oh, there we go. All right, so. And, and I think while you're looking for it, like I think what's also useful on this catalog item is to provide like a template for somebody, right? So I'm thinking you in like have a description here that says like, you know, please, how to use this catalog item and then like an example template that they could download. Um, yeah, you know, what, what would, oh my goodness, I can't even click on anything. I'm not sure what's happened. <laughs> The stream broke your uh, keyboard. Well, it sure feels that way. Uh, I'm trying to see if I had something 
Oh, there we go. Something just something like popped up that was like well i yeah Yeah, so i'm if you hadn't noticed i'm standing right (laughs) i I was trying to make sure my cables because i have a rat's nest under my desk i was trying to make sure nothing was like getting pulled Uh but i think i think something did because all of a sudden my uh i have a you know a a usb c thing over here Yeah. yeah and and it did some all of a sudden my SD card is like, Oh, it's not properly ejected and stuff. like that. So who knows? Anyways. So this time card test was, yeah, I, I grabbed it from the time card table. I, I did the spreadsheet template and then I just put a single line in and it should be uh, a three, seven date for some hours and so forth. Um, and so what, what we'll get when I run this is we should get some messages um i put some gs info messages in there and so you can see it's correct format starting import time card import uh started successfully and this is the data source import you know this is the really (laughs) 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 this is the record and obviously this is why you want to redirect them you don't want them coming back to this record Um, yeah but you don't need to see any of that and what we should get now, so we have a, a, a row in there, but we should get one more for the seven. And there it is. And um, we can look at it and you can see that it's <laughs> 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 I feel so good now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, but you can see it, it loaded the stuff in and it totaled um, that. But you can see how this would work you know, for, for users that need to import a, a, a data set of time cards and yeah. have it uh, get into the system without going through an admin queue or a backlog you, or submitting a request. Do you want to maybe show the import set um, table um, for, for people? Yeah, yeah, we, we can get into that. I Just so that they could see like how the data, um, I think it was from, not, not from data sources, but from this and, will and, bring to that, that data source. Yeah, this is actually one thing I did want to bring up, though. It it will create each so time you want it some gets cleanup. Yeah, you definitely want some cleanup on that, um, just because it will create those. Uh, uh, go to imports. It's, it's under advanced right there. Yeah. And so sort uh, by let's load see. completed probably is fine. Yeah, and so that top one. So just if you haven't seen one right like this kind of is kind of what it looks like the import set runs and then if you click on the row or yeah click on that one it's fine you'll uh this just tells you how much was run and if you had any logs but if you go back one there was a another tab that uh we the import set rows so you can see that you know this row was inserted so yeah um yeah and again, you know, I think it's just it's just a nice way to offload some of that um, work that an admin's going to get day to day or or whatever, and, and you can build a whole, you know, a whole process around this to save yourself time and energy um, for different you know different use cases. Yeah, no, I, I think it's great, especially if you add some checks to make sure that the data that they're loading is, is what they want. <laughs> and, and, and maybe it's not a record producer, it's a catalog item that goes through an approval record. Like, I Yeah, think you, you, you could definitely throw some checks in there um, so it doesn't necessarily create the record right, right, you know, right away. You can sit on it and then get it approved and then have it do that so you're not bringing in bad data, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. I think that's... That's right. a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's like a really nice little package that you could, you know, help, you know, if we if we think of a digital transformation, right, of in a consulting world, you can't always get from A to Z instantly, right? You do need some like phases or baby steps that you go through. And I think this is like a good example of if someone has lots of data, they need to get it in and maybe that data yeah. comes consistently. Like here's like a process you could utilize with people. And, and you could, you know, you could maybe even not open it up to just any end user. You could exactly. have ad, or you could have, uh, uh, what are they called? You know, a, a higher level user. Power right? users. Right? Power users. That's, yeah. that's what I'm after. You yeah. Know, someone that you can trust that you don't really need to worry too much about. But again, that's probably bad process that you don't 
Yeah. But you just uh, open but, it up. <laughs> but I think it's great, right? A user criteria on a group maybe, or on somebody with a specific yeah, role, yeah. like mm -hmm. you could definitely, you know, find the right balance here because you don't want anyone just to be able to submit it. So yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, we've all been with those end users that are like, <laughs> I yeah. don't know how to use computers. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's also tough. Like you probably, if we were really robust, we'd probably want an easy way to, to roll back the data. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's probably the hard or tricky one is like as an admin now, like, if someone uploads something and they're like, oh no, I uploaded, you know, crap data, then you're like, oh man, now I have to spend this time. You know, well, so I, I actually have a, I, I posted something on my LinkedIn the other, the other week that is this, there's another component to this from the same client that I had to add in where their, their process was if you submit a time card, if you submit time card data and it's incorrect, you basically end up submitting an opposite time card record so if you submit a time card a with seven hours on monday mm -hmm. and that's incorrect you would submit time card b with minus seven hours on monday ah uh, interesting and then one more so a third one with the correct hours and i yeah. i have a solution that loops through that and just adds the the things together so it only creates one record with the the, correct the corrected time amount yeah <laughs> so nice. Nice. <laughs> you can get creative with it for sure yeah you know yeah there's, there's a lot of avenues you can go down cool well i i think uh i think we'll keep it you know at 20 minutes here and yeah, if yeah. uh if you enjoyed it, like subscribe. If you have other topics you want us to, to kind of dive into, I think next week we'll try to dive into a San Diego release since that yeah. just came out. Um, yeah, so let's we'll, do it. we're, we're going to try to explore all of the, the hidden gems uh, that ServiceNow provided. And maybe things we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it, it, again, uh, hope you enjoyed it. And right. uh, <laughs> thanks again, John, for, for leading us through that. Yeah, no problems. I had a good time. We'll, we'll talk to everyone later. Mm -hmm.